Hey everybody, welcome to a special episode of Tales from a Professional Nerd. My name is Brian C.P. Steele, and I will be your nerd today, and every other day that you decide to watch my show. Uh, first off, we're going to say, uh, before we get into the, the week in Brian and all that sort of thing, uh, you can probably tell by the, uh, the thumbnail and the intros of this video um, that we are having uh, a, 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 a pleasant lament for the fact that this episode was supposed to be, um, at this exact moment, I was supposed to be running... Uh, some really cool adventures at GaryCon, uh, GaryCon 12, which sadly did not happen because of the coronavirus, uh, and uh, everything got locked down, and we all had to do our our due diligence to stay away from people. And we're doing we're doing our best to to still get by and do some digital gaming, and uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, what I did want to say um, is. Uh, uh, and I'm going to probably bring it up several times uh, in this episode, is uh, it is very important. Um, I'm going to put the address to... The, I'm going to do, put the link in the description, uh, but I will also, uh, if, I've, if I've got my wherewithal and I have the magic... Oh, um, that link is going to take you to the Gary Khan Bazaar. Um, and what that is, is it's an online merch shop. Normally, uh, at the convention, they've got a table full of stuff that you can just buy, and, you know, it's full of awesome things. Um, but this year, because the show got canceled, uh, and it's a very, very, um, it's an expensive show for, for Luke and Ernie and, and everybody to put on, um, they... Uh, they, they've opened up the uh, the merch channels uh, as this kind of internet bazaar for people to order for to get you know product and things. So before I go any further, uh, you'll note by the the initial thing, uh, I got one of the multiple uh, Gary Con Twelve glasses. Uh, it's got the original date on it uh, for when it would when the the convention would be. So I'm gonna take a real sip real quick, but. Um, so ceremonially, I'm drinking out of a Gary Con glass, and also while while we're here, because um, when I go to conventions, uh, generally speaking, I those are you know they're work for me, but they're also a ton of fun. You get to socialize and see all your friends. Um, so what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna take uh, a little five second. Uh, moment of silence, uh, maybe even 10 seconds, uh, where I'm going to raise my glass, my Gary Con 12 shot glass, mm, uh, filled with your uh, favorite scotch whiskey, uh, that I, uh, if I was at Gary Con and John Johnson was nearby, it would probably end up being Malort, because I did not run any anything for him this weekend. Or I wasn't going to, and that's kind of the punishment for for messing with John. Um, but uh, I want to raise a glass and give out a hearty cheers, skull, slancha, uh, to all of the people out there that are going to make the best of it this weekend. The fact that we couldn't be there at the convention that we a lot of us desperately wanted to be, but this is this is to you. That's a long enough moment of silence, because silence on a podcast or a blog, vlog, internet chapter thingy is weird. Um, so, uh, did my my ceremonial uh, wish I was wish I was at the convention uh, shot out of my Gary Con twelve shot glass. I've got my uh, my drink, so I don't uh, lose my voice while we're while we're walking. I forgot to turn the sound off on my phone very professional of me let's uh let's do that okay um my new phone uh, I'm, i don't know if i i think i said something last week that uh my phone had taken a, a, a little dip um and uh i've got a new one it's back i have i have my phone back I'm, I'm back part of the digital age again not that i wasn't really before 
Um, but uh, let's uh, let's talk about the the week in Brian. It's been um, really kind of kind of laid back. Finished some stuff for Dungeon in a Box. Uh, I got uh, a little bit more left to do uh, uh, on a Secret Project, which. Um, it will probably not be this week and it might not be, it won't be this episode and it might not be the next episode. Uh, but I have it under good authority from the, the uh, client in question that, um, I should be able to start maybe, maybe not a lot of talking about it, but I can at least kind of unveil the, uh, the big surprise. Um, the, the, the super secret project that I've been working on that I am very excited for you guys to eventually get to see and play and whatnot. So, um, in theory, I could tell you right now, but I would much rather have something a little more concrete to be able to like, almost give you like a, to get a real spiel to tell you, uh, and then we'll be able to, I'll actually dedicate a little more time to it and we'll, we'll talk more about it and get people excited and hopefully, uh, uh, drum up some uh, some internet buzz if you will um let's see what else uh yeah no it's just been i've been doing a lot of painting uh finish up some commission work uh, i'm waiting for a very cool um a very cool model uh from a client uh he has not shipped it to me yet uh, but I can't wait uh, because it is a model that I have had. I've I've looked at several times. Like I've seen it in stores. I've seen it on the Kickstarter spread. Um, that I I'm like, oh man, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, it's a, a big. It's a, a big model. It's um, the uh, Dancing Hut of Baba Yaga uh, from the Reaper. Uh, I want to say it's the Bones Miniature line, but it might be the Bones Premium. Um, but either way, it's a big like uh, Russian witch's hut. Uh, with giant chicken legs, and oh, it's gonna be—it's gonna be so much fun. Uh, I'm I'm very excited to uh, to get to you know because I I have always enjoyed making terrain, but this is making terrain and a model all in one, so that this, that should be a lot of fun. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of painting, uh, a lot of work stuff. Really had a couple of really good meetings with uh, the crafty guys about um, us moving forward with uh, some more spycraft news. Hopefully, have some in the future. Um, yeah, uh, still trying to get a hold of, uh, stores and distribution channels and things for people to carry Big Child, uh, Big, Big Child Creatives, um, miniature lines. Uh, although I, w I won't lie, that's been a little harder lately because of, you know, frankly, uh, this whole virus thing having everybody shut down, um, and a lot of stores are closed and a lot of people are like, you know, we don't know what the future's gonna look like, let's... Let's let's hold off on uh, on writing checks. Um, so yeah, it's been it's so it's been a, it's been a, a good week. Um, I've got uh, uh, some irons in the fire uh, that we'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, I did want to take a second and discuss my wardrobe. Uh, so because this is my Gary Con, uh, my my salute to Gary Con, my Gary Con. I wish we were there. Uh, episode um, at GaryCon every year uh, because uh, Gary Gygax was well known for his Hawaiian shirts. He was well known for always always being found in in Hawaiian shirts of some of some capacity, um, especially in a lot of the pictures of him like D being a dungeon master for his for his group of friends or at or at shows or whatever. Um, he almost always had a, a, some kind of Hawaiian shirt, and on the Saturday of GaryCon. Uh, every year we have a uh, a giant picture with everybody that that thought to bring one uh, they put on their Hawaiian shirt we all gather in the lobby get as close as we can and a professional photographer up on the uh, up on the balcony takes a giant group shot of us um, and uh, it's it's really cool it's rad it's, it's cool to be a part of that um, it's a way to celebrate that little tiny bit of, of Gary that we all kind of know just off of hand. I mean, hell, when he was on, when his image was on Futurama, guess what he was wearing? Uh, you know, like it, it, when he was on Simpsons, guess what he was wearing? Yeah, you know, that, that's, that it, it's, it's an icon. And so as part of his memorial convention, his memorial gaming convention, every Saturday of that show, 
we get together and we all wear our Hawaiian style shirts. I buy a new one every year, so I'm not like you know looking weird. This is my my comic book bow bang pow zip zap. It's all comic book expletives. Um, that I thought was fun for this year. So uh, because I wasn't going to get to wear it there, I think I said I was like I'll wear it here, and that will be super fun. Uh, so that's what this is. However, not to besmirch what is underneath it is an Armor Class 10, the sponsor of my show, uh, Armor Class 10 Apparel, a Vote Gygax Arneson 74. Uh, I thought that was particularly poignant for this weekend. Uh, I was going to wear it at the show. I was going to wear it uh, whether or not the show got canceled. So this is an amazing, amazing uh, uh, t-shirt, especially in the day and age right now where good politicians are super hard to find um, and bad ones are around every corner and on every microphone um, the, the I was explaining this to my daughter this morning uh, when she saw the shirt she's like I don't understand uh, mind you she's 11 um, so I was explaining to her that uh, uh, Gary Gygax uh, the reason why Gary Khan is Gary Khan he's one of the fathers of D&D uh, and then Dave Arneson is uh, the other, like one of the other primary fathers of D and D. Um, and while I consider myself friends with like Ernie and Luke, uh, the the Gygax clan, um, I never did get to meet uh, Gary aside from a handshake at a Gen Con twenty years ago. Um, and that that will always be something that you know kind of always make it's it's part of what makes Gary Khan special for me is because I didn't get a chance to know the man um I didn't get a chance to ever roll dice with him uh so it's it's one of those things where he did mean so much to my career uh even in a roundabout way that it is hard for me not to uh not to be not to be a little saddened by the fact that you know I didn't get a chance to, to ever ever really know him. Um, luckily, I do get to I, I do know a lot of you know his family and a lot of his friends through the industry. I've had a chance to to kind of get that sort of secondhand feel, but we all know that's not the same. It it never will be. Um, however, uh, I mentioned Dave Arneson. Um, and I, I don't know if I've mentioned on any of the, on any of the episodes before. My, my brain's kind of Swiss cheesy when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, but uh, I do have a very cool Dave Arneson moment. I've met I met Dave several times um, through uh, he he would come to a lot of the the conventions uh, normally as a guest, uh, but he would do a lot of like roaming around in the exhibitor hall. And uh, on one of those particular days, I want to say it was in an Origins, or Origins Game Expo, um, he, this was when he, this was late enough in his life that he was uh, in, he was bound to his wheelchair. Um, or at least uh, he wasn't doing any walking, he was wheel, being wheeled, wheeled around. And him and his handler popped into, uh, I was, at the time I was working at Mongoose Publishing, um, and he, they, they wheeled into the Mongoose booth, and... Uh, uh, he kind of did a did a couple of little laps around the, the small booth, and he ended up over at our uh, at our Conan stand uh, when we were doing the the Conan role playing game. And uh, he, he him and his handler sat there for quite a bit, paging through stuff, and they ended up buying slash being given a, quite a bit of Conan stuff. And during the exchange, uh, he saw my name tag because I had one of the you know floppy lanyard name tags. He saw my name tag and he, he goes, Brian, uh, you you've done a lot of this this Conan stuff, haven't you? And I was like, if, you know, first off, I you know I was immediately like thrown back <laughs> for a moment. I forgot I had a uh, a name tag on, and I was like, oh my god, he knows my name. Um, and I was like, well, yeah, 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 I did that a lot of that and a lot of Bad One Five, and you know, and he he paused and he goes. You know, make sure you keep up the good work. This is good stuff, and that, and then, and then went, went on his way. And whether or not 
he was picking my stuff out of out of anything else he's read, or whether or not he was just being nice to another a, a fellow role playing game writer, um, or if he legitimately did enjoy our our take on Conan's world and uh, the, the work that we had put in. Um, it was easily one of the shortest and most simplest but strongest felt compliments that I have ever gotten in my career. Um, just to know that one of the fathers of D&D read my stuff, um, read, whether or not he enjoyed it, and then the fact that he specifically was like, you know, keep it up, keep doing what you're doing, you do good work. Again, I could never, I, I'll, I'll never be able to know whether or not he would legitimately met me, uh, or if he just meant kind of, hey, young writers in general, keep it up. But I will say that that feeling of of Dave Artisan's approval um, was second to only maybe my dad's approval to my choice <laughs> of doing what I what I do. Um, it was. It was it was uh, awe inspiring. It, it it definitely made me want to stay in the industry. It made me want to uh, keep you know keep pushing and keep going. And uh, I uh, I'll never forget that moment. You know, it was it was it was very big to me. And to know that he had such a big hand in in what we eventually know to be the role-playing game industry uh the foundation of things like magic the gathering and you know th those things wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the fact that D, &D broke that ground um and I, I i'll swear by that is that's why I, I made sure to get this shirt from ac10 that's why i'm wearing this shirt now it's a it's an homage to some very 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 cool people and the big, you know, a big reason why we would uh, be up in Lake Geneva if we could, celebrating and playing and having a good time. Um, which brings me to uh, my uh, my discussion on Garygon. Um, so uh, uh, tonight, uh, the little and little tip on on the 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 weekend, Brian is at GaryCon, I, I've mentioned it several times, is that I was very fortunate to be able to uh, get a seat at uh, Satine Fe at, at one of Satine Phoenix's D&D uh, &D special events. Um, and when Gary Khan said that they were going to be, when Luke said that they weren't going to be able to make it, Satine reached out to all of us and said, hey, I'm still going to run my event. I'm just going to run it digitally that Thursday night instead of you know, at a table, which is, you know, while it's a bummer that, you know, it's, it's not the same feel, uh, you know, it is, it is definitely the best out of a bad situation. Um, and, uh, I still get to play with her as my DM tonight, uh, uh whether it's, you know, digitally or not. So that's going to be super cool. Um, and I'll tell you all about it next week. Um, it is, uh, I did talk to her, uh, it is an event that uh, cannot be recorded um, due to obligations or whatnot. So while I can tell you all about it next week, and I will, um, I can't record it and, uh, and give you guys any excerpts or anything like that, which is kind of a bummer, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but it's, it's kind of a taste of what's going on this weekend for GaryCon. Um... So Gary Con Luke shifted as much as he could, as many people as they could, to uh, do a do a, like a digital convention this weekend, and that's it's not the first time that's that sort of thing has happened. It's just normally it is um, designed to be that way. It's supposed to be a a digital convention. Like they they specifically say, hey, from you know Jump Street, there's one that's based out of Illinois uh, that. Uh, I get invited to every year. I never, I never get a chance to actually do it. Uh, maybe I will this year. I don't know. Um, but it's uh, uh, they they set up basically a whole bunch of games and game masters online, and you sign up for events and you show up and you show up digitally into their little chat rooms or whatever, and you guys play D and D over over webcams and stuff. 
um, which is super cool. Um, and in fact, it is cool enough that uh, I think after my, my foray tonight into kind of professional D&D online, um, I am going to probably, uh, I've been talking to some of the other industry folk, and I think I'm going to start a uh, an industry D&D &D game um, online, and if I can get all their permission to record it and, you know, maybe start a second wing of the channel uh, where we're not tailsing it, we're uh, DMing from a professional nerd. I don't know. I, we'll, we'll figure something out, but... Um, whatever it is, uh, I think that that's going to be a lot of fun. And it made me, uh, it made me wonder if it's the kind of thing that if I really do enjoy it, if I do enjoy playing and, and game mastering from behind the webcam, uh, through services like Roll20, uh, and D&D &D Beyond, um, if I decide to run like some maybe some short-term campaigns you know like 10 sessions or something like that um that uh maybe people would uh basically bid for seats or pay for seats and then i would put that money to a charity or in this case um i had been talking again this fifth which is why this fits into this uh this this episode um, I had been talking to Luke Gygax about uh, where to send the, the dragon I painted for the charity auction and uh, that uh, my lovely bride is going to be finishing a D&D centric piece that we're going to auction off uh, on eBay uh, for GaryCon and the proceeds will go to help stem off some of the because I, I know I know that Luke is going to Luke and Ernie and all those guys they're going to be hurting after this year Um the fact that uh, they are um, that, that they're losing out on on what is a like their yearly show uh, that's a lot of income um, that's a lot of sales over the you know right over the top I don't know their situation that they had with the with the Grand Geneva but it's possible that you know maybe they lost some money there whatever the case may be if we want Gary Khan to continue if we want it to be successful and we want next year once this whole virus thing is done and over with if we want it to be able to happen non-digitally like a common convention again next year um we need to help generate some funds we need to help kind of lick the wound so to speak uh, of, of what happened and so what i have offered luke is uh anything that he can auction uh that i paint for him you know, don't worry about putting it towards the game, the, the, you know, the, the gamer assistance fund, uh, which is what this year's auction was supposed to be. Put it into the Gary Khan coffers, uh, you know, try and heal that damage so we can have a seamless transition into next year and not feel like it's, you know, oh my God, remember how last year crippled us? Let's try and get past that. Um, and so, uh, Natalie, when she finishes her, uh, her D and D piece, um, I'm going to put it up on eBay. You guys are definitely going to hear about it here. You're going to hear it all over my Facebook and my Twitter. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'll auction it and the proceeds, after paying the fees to eBay, uh, the proceeds will go to Gary Hunt. Uh, I'll just, I'll write, I'll cut Luke a check. Um, and uh, something else that uh, I wanted to to say, uh, speaking of eBay and Gary Hunt, uh, so this weekend, um, specifically the Gary Khan weekend, in my efforts to hopefully help out where I can, um, anything that I sell on eBay through my eBay my my eBay uh, eBay signature uh, this weekend during Gary Khan, um, I'm going to give that proceeds to Gary Khan as well. Uh, and I know I don't have a lot, but I've got a lot of like miniature bases and uh, uh, you know a couple of figures left up there, uh, some some resin masters for proxies, you know, just uh, some kind of assorted stuff. And if I get a chance to throw some more things up uh, tonight or tomorrow, maybe I will. Um, but uh, I'll put my uh, my eBay link in the description of the video. Um, but anything that I anything that I happen to sell this weekend over the uh, the Gary Con weekend, I will 
put that money together and send it off to, to Luke as well to try and help uh, Gary Khan stay on its feet and not uh, not not suffer a, 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 a such a, a, a devastating blow. Um, but yeah, so uh, this weekend um, I was supposed to run a bunch of games um, and play in some games too, but uh, for the purposes of the video, I want to talk about what I was going to be running. Um, now, that does not mean that I won't run these, and I'm not going to give away any secrets or anything like that, but we're just going to do a quick rundown of what I was supposed to be doing for GaryCon this weekend. Um, after I take a drink out of my GaryCon 12 plastic cup. Um, so, uh, for the, anybody who's been paying any attention to me lately, um, uh, they know that I have been pushing real hard to make a 5e D&D version of Spelljammer. Uh, while all of my stuff is, is shorthand notes and, you know, half-ass files on my computer and, you know, nothing's been put, like, pen to paper written like a narrative setup because, you know, I've got things that actually need to pay the bills... Um, I've got quite a bit of data roaming around in my brain and in the computer um, of what my updated Spelljammer world book would look like. Um, and so, for GaryCon this year, um, I wanted to run as much of that as I could. So I said uh, that I would, I would run one Ravenloft game, um, which uh, I, I've always I've always enjoyed Ravenloft, and last year at GaryCon, uh, the Ravenloft event that I ran was probably the most well received, um, and the people who the people who played it blew me away the most, and I had the most fun being that kind of evil guy behind the screen. <laughs> um, so I made sure to want to run one Ravenloft game this year, but then my other three games were all Spelljammer games. Um, and, uh, sadly, uh, you know, fortunate for me before the show got, the show got canceled, um, all of my stuff sold out, uh, all of my events, every seat was filled. A couple of the Spelljammer events had waiting lists of people in case someone dropped out, um, which is a very good feeling. It is, it is a, it is a, it is a good feeling to know that the work that I'm putting into it isn't being lost and that there are fans out there that want to be a part of it um i had uh, a couple of emails from people who were talking about how hey I, I think i made it into one of your games uh super excited about it you know that kind of thing so i'm i'm i was pretty pretty jazzed about the fact that um the, the I I was only gonna run three spell jammers, but they were all gonna be all fold up, full crew, barring anybody not showing up, of course. But um, and then we got word that the show wasn't gonna happen, and I know that I probably should have looked into running them digitally, um, and I feel kind of bad that I didn't, uh, because it looks honestly, it does look like the the. Uh, digital tabletop Gary Con that Luke has put together on such short, you know, on such short notice, um, it looks like it's going to be pretty badass. So I, I am kind of sad that I didn't uh, that I didn't jump into that as well, um, which is part of the reason why I want to do more uh, between now and next Gary Con to uh, to kind of make up for that. That that I, I I decided not to not to follow suit, not to run digitally. Um, I kind of again feeling bad about it, um, but hopefully everything goes well. Year will move quickly, and then come Gary, come Gary Con next year, I'll have all of these events. You know, these events are are ready to go. I'll have them you know polished to the point where I know exactly you know all the best places to you know to have laugh track moments. All the best places to have my dun dun dance. So we'll 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 see we'll see. Um, 
But I figured um, in this uh, in this uh, kind of tribute to Gary Khan, what I would do is I would just kind of run through the four events uh, for the people who weren't going to Gary Khan um, to get an idea of the kind of thing that Brian, your professional nerd, what he likes to run at shows. Uh, because one of the things that I that I don't like to do at shows is I don't generally like to do first level characters. I generally don't like doing make your own character um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but for the most part, I prefer to make super fun NPC style characters, a group of them, and give uh, give my uh, uh, my players choices to pick up what they want, to be what they want. And uh, that it's kind of the the narrative's already somewhat there, so we don't lose a half an hour of someone making their character at the at the at the table. We don't lose a half an hour of game time of people. Oh, hey, what are you? What are you? They've already got you know everything that they need right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna start with so what these are these are, these are rubber banded all the character packets. So anytime you run any anytime that you're in a game. A Brian, anytime you're in a Brian Steele game, um, anytime that you're in a Brian Steele run convention game, um, I will hand you one of these packets. Uh, let's take a look. So this is actually the Ravenloft game. Um, all black, get it? Uh, that what I would do is I would come to the table and I would go, okay, I've got these characters. And each folder has each packet has got a picture of the character that you would be portraying. Um, all art, of course, found on the internet in places where, uh, uh, in, in places where people have put very cool concept art up for grabs. Um, and since I am not selling this information, I'm giving it away for free, I'm not hindering anybody. I wish that I could know the artist on every single one so I could give everybody credit um, but unfortunately some of the websites that I go to are just kind of collection sites and they don't have every artist so uh, I, I put my I tip my hat to the collective art world and hope that they know how awesome they are uh, so in this game we've got it so the this is the um, the Drakesburg hunting club uh, was the name of the the name of the, the game session and it was effectively a murder mystery party uh, where the player characters have all been invited to uh, to this these eccentric Ravenloft nobles just outside of Drakesburg, hence the Drakesburg, um, who uh, they have just lost their daughter. Their daughter was found dead. And they have invited everyone out to investigate the the murder because they know they know for a fact that someone at the table is the murderer and that in typical Ravenloft fashion the dark lords of dread the the, the demigods that run the the whole plane are protecting him or her and so what they have done is they basically said that the player characters need to figure out of, of among them, among the, the people sitting at the table, they have to figure out who done it and basically offer them up as a sacrifice to justice to the parents or come daybreak the parents will finish a ritual that sacrifices everyone at the table up to justice to try and set the scales right so there's this sort of feeling of you know hastiness of oh god we gotta we, we gotta we gotta get gotta figure out what's going on and all of the clues to figure out who did it are in the mansion they ha they're given a ring of skeleton keys. They have free roam to where wherever they wish, um, and they can figure it out however they want, however they, they can, and however they want. So it's possible that the player characters might uh, all turn on somebody, 
and be like, well, you, you did it. And they go, but I didn't do it. But nope, nope, we've all decided that you did. And it, the, the, the only thing that they have to do is they have to basically have the the culprit, whoever they choose to be the the murderer, uh, to, for as far as the uh, as far as the 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 parents go uh, of the the grieving parents, ones who who started this whole murder mystery thing. Um, as far as they're concerned, they just need to have someone alive delivered to them before morning, so justice can be served. Um, and the characters we get. For that sh for for that that fabulous murder mystery party, the the gallery of rogues, we have Grace Cullen, a uh, human bard, noble. Um, in fact, actually, uh, her background story is that she is the cousin of the little girl who died. Uh, so she has a little extra in. Uh, uh, in she's been staying at the manor with them uh, when she was found dead. Uh, we have Grock and Rose, the, uh, there's, show, show you Grace, there's Grace. We have Grock and Rose, a wonderful lady, um, a half-orc ranger, uh, who is actually a sailor who has sailed up and down the foggy coasts of Ravenloft, um, and has, uh, has come to this land as kind of a, uh, an inland tracker um, and a lot of the locals don't don't look at her too fondly. We have Lil Bo Lil Bo is a uh, human rogue uh, who's effectively um, kind of a street scum uh, and if I remember correctly let me find him do, 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 do. Uh, ba, ba, ba. he is. Yeah, no, he, he's a uh, just kind of one of the local, one of the local nomads, um, who his caravan sort of left him behind, uh, in the local area, and he's made the mo made the most out of it. Uh, we have Sir Farid Trayet. Um, a half elf fighter, uh, a basically a local soldier who his his uh, uh, injuries one evening uh, or one, one campaign caused him to leave the uh, leave the soldiering behind and uh, go into private practice as kind of like a wilderness scout, um, as like a like a, a trapper trapper ranger extraordinaire. Uh, we have Steven Grousto. Take a look at him. He's a screaming idiot. Uh, he is a human barbarian who lives up in them there hills. Uh, he is... He very rarely comes down from the uh, uh, from the wilder, from the wilderness. Uh, mostly just kind of trade with the local village and everything. Um, and... Uh, uh, is known for his savage, savage temper uh, and blind rages that have ended in ended in misery before. And then we have Vunt Wandfingers, a local goblin. Uh, he is a goblin warlock who uh, has been was passing through the area and. You know, being a warlock, he's got his uh, his little magical uh, uh, magical voices in his head, and they told him to stop and do something very important on a recent uh, on a recent uh, equinox. Um, and while he was there, uh, he has somehow gotten uh, wrapped up in this whole murder mystery. Uh, so those are the characters available for that kind of game. And then, so when you would come to the game, you would sit down. I would hand out the, f the file folders and let the players decide who's who. Um, I have my plot written to the point where uh, I know who killed the, the, the girl, obviously. I know how the game's going to go. I know where the encounters are going to be. I know how the mansion is laid out and what people could, what they what they might be able to figure out along the way. Um the, uh, the the only sticking point for me uh, as a as a DM in that instance is that because it is a five player game and there is six characters, 
um, there is always the possibility of someone important being left out, which means if that's the case, I have alternate alternate timelines and stuff built in. Always do. It's just it's just you never know. Some you you might think one of your NPC or one of your PC packets is the coolest thing ever, and that oh my god, someone's gonna absolutely jump on this guy in a heartbeat, and then sure enough. You get to the game, everyone picks a character, and the one that you thought was going to go the fastest is just sitting there. So that was the, that's the Ravenloft game that I that I was going to run. Uh, the let's see, what was the next one? Um, I think yes, this one is this the noble one. Or is this the Artificer? No, this is the Artificer one. Uh, so, uh, if you watched my um, my charity Gen Con Spelljammer game, uh, it involved uh, a momentary brush with the Library of Brazenhold, uh, which is a giant dwarven forge ship, a just a mountain of a ship. Uh, run off of mag the magical energies of uh, used up magic items that get thrown into a into the furnace. Um, and in the Gen Con charity game, uh, the player characters, the players just kind of ran into some some dead librarians, um, and uh, they never really got a chance to deal with the library as a whole. What the library does is the library. Um, is instead of books and scrolls, which it does have, um, it is a cataloging and monitoring station for magic items. And it takes it upon themselves, the the, the librarians of, of the Brazenhold, the Council of Librarians, they take it upon themselves to um, basically choose whether or not certain people, certain ships, certain... Uh, villains, heroes, or anti-heroes, they claim to be neutral, um, should have uh, certain magic items and artifacts. Uh, the the spheres, which is kind of the way that, to, that Spelljammer d denotes uh, space, uh, the spheres are very big, very vast, and there are a lot of secrets, and there's a lot of stuff in there, there's a lot of things out there that are truly, truly epic and, and magical in nature, and what the library does is that the library keeps tabs on all this stuff, and that if someone uh, comes up with, you know, uh, they, you know, someone says, oh, hey, they, they ran into this old skeleton ship, this old skeleton, this holdout ship, and they found, you know, the three of the three of the pieces of the uh, uh, of the celestial dragon, uh, which is a legit thing, like a space dragon. Um, they found three pieces to reanimate a celestial dragon. The library would then send out librarians to uh, fetch them, uh, or at least uh, catalog who has it, make sure that it's in re in responsible hands, and honestly keep tabs on where those things are. So in case something does happen, let's say they they keep tabs and they catalog it, you know. Prince McAfee uh, has these pieces of the dragon, and then six months down the road, someone hears that Prince McAfee's ship got taken over by the Naogi, uh, which are these horrible little spider slaver things. Um, well, suddenly the librarian's like, whoa, we don't want that to fall into their hands. So they've been keeping tabs on where these things are, so now they know just go send adventurers, send librarians, send claimants to go try and fetch these pieces. Also, one of the things the library does is, in its vast holds, because again, a, a an actual dwarven mountain ship is a flying mountain. I mean, it's it is literally it's a mile across. It's you know several thousand feet tall, and it just kind of lumbers through space. Uh, but inside that it it's it could be an entire dwarven community like a like an entire like generations of dwarves living inside this thing um and inside the library of Brazenhold is that there are tons of magically sealed up vaults that are that hold magic items and if you are on good terms with the library i.e all of your dues are paid um and you're not some kind of notorious jerk um 
you can go to the, to the library and check out items. You could go and say, you know, I am about to, I were, were my people are, are, my crew are about ready to go attack a legitimate ghost ship. I need all the magic, you know, the, the magic of disruption and anti undead I can get. And the librarians would basically say, okay, well, here's two maces of disruption, seven arrows of, you know, ethereal puncturing or whatever. And they would write up a, you know, you pay this much up front. And every week that you have it up to the the time that you say you're going to return it, you're going to incur charges. And if it's past that, you'll incur interest, late fees, if you will. And the there's a fi there is a date that basically says that if it's not back in our hands by then, we're going to send people, you know, we, we have locator tags, we have spellcasters, we have the ways to track them down. We're going to go find them and bring them back, which means that if you died with them, then we're probably going to end up avenging you. Cool. Um, if you didn't and you're just holding on to it because it's cheaper to rent, uh, to rent and steal a Mesa Destruction than it is to make one, uh, or to find one in the wild, so to speak, then you're going to have a problem with these librarians. Uh, and so what this session was, a long, very long-winded ex explanation of the Library of Brazenold, uh, what this session was is a very powerful set of items uh, have gone well past their delinquent charge. And the, uh, the ship that took them, or that, that, that rented them, uh, is no longer answering hails. It's no longer answering calls. It's not answering, you know, any magical sends or messages. Um, and some of our, the, some of the library's locator spells aren't working uh, to try and find the, they can find the ship, but can't find the items. Um, and so these characters are a team of librarian claimants um, that are going out to uh fetch basically they're going out to to find out what happened get those items back hell or high water um and uh at least one of these characters will have a uh a, a basically a a magical scroll on them with permanent you know permanent ink that says this is how much you owe us uh you better have it or we're you know the, the the next steps will be taken um and so this this game was basically uh kind of hide and seek uh, or a, or a, a search and search and claim uh where you are for once uh your debt collectors you know you're 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 the 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 library's taxman if you if you will and that means that you're kind of on the for you're like, kind of doing this for a good cause you know like you're you're it, but it's not like the heroic save the day cause it's you know it's your job but of course then there will be twists and things in the story uh so we've got An uh arabelle sunsong uh a uh, half elf warlock entertainer uh she is uh welcome on the ship um because she is also a uh, a very adept um she's very adept at, at seeing magical auras and like kind of seeing magical tracks and things uh so let me get his name right uh yeah i made i made these guys uh calistrophilonis uh who is a uh gnomish artificer uh actually from the eberron sphere he, so he is a uh he is a house marked uh a house marked gnome and in uh in the the background gnomes only recently uh, were allowed, like in the last thirty years, allowed to take the uh, take the role of librarians on ships. Um, so there's a little bit of a uh, uh, there's some tension there that there's this this upstart. Uh, we have Polly Thesaurus. Uh, she is a uh, another she's another Eberron uh, from uh, Eberron dwarf. Um, that uh, she is a master locksmith uh, and uh, claims that uh, she can uh, uh, just like she solves puzzles. She's a, that's, a, that's her thing. She she solves puzzles and um, 
a lot of times uh, the library library has found that um, sadly uh, see people will try and steal their their equipment and things after after renting them and they'll like hide them behind trapped doors and things hence why they need a uh, expert locksmith uh, let's see what else we have here uh, we've got uh, Brother Dozenasarabola, uh, another gnome. Uh, this one, however, he is a uh, a gnome cleric uh, from the uh, Faith of Mysteries, and most of his spellcasting abilities are really kind of stemmed toward uh, divination and finding things. There's a reason why he's on this ship. He is very good at... Uh, determining direction in the wild of of the universe uh of the spheres um then we have uh rummel cold tooth as uh, a li uh, a librarian dwarf ranger um he actually is the guy who runs the furnace um dwarf ships uh they burn magic items uh, normally like either of those that have been used up broken pieces of magic items, a potion bottle that has the drippings in the bottom. You know, it doesn't have to be full magic items to kind of run at a normal speed, but if you want to make a dwarf ship go fast or you want to, like, overcharge its cannons, uh, you could throw, like, gra grab me that plus one hand axe and throw it in the forge and, you know, blazes up into 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 awesomeness. Uh, and Roll here, that's his job. He's basically, like, ship's engineer. Um, and then the last character sh character here, we have Cobalt Ten Hammers. Um, Cobalt Ten Hammers is technically uh, the ship's bosun. He's like the, the first mate. Um, he is a paladin uh, of a warrior-centric dwarven god um, that recently, uh, unfortunately, was mystically caught in a situation where uh, he had to make some bad calls and it is the only reason why he is not the captain of this crew. Um, he feels that he is not ready to be a captain. Uh, Alright, next next one we were going to do. Let's see what we got here. Um, this one... Ah, okay. Uh, so this one is going to be a fun session. Uh, in Spelljammer, um, there is a race of creature that kind of is the background race of just about all the mysteries of Spelljammer. It's kind of like if you want to uh, consider them like the elves of Tolkien, you know, like they they, they are called the Arcane. Uh, the Arcane, they're the like these like ten foot tall blue dudes, very like long, slender fingers and arms, and um, you know the 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 theory is that the the term arcane magic was was named after them um they are you know magical creatures that don't come from any of the particular spheres they are the ones that created spell jamming helms they're the ones that that tamed the creature that became the spell jammer which is a an actual ship the size of like a small moon um and learned how to breed the small jammers which are the tiny versions of the, of the, the, the big guy. Um, and they are super mysterious, super enigmatic. You know, you, they're, they're like a D and D Illuminati for Spelljammer. You know, you never know what the arcane are up to. You never know exactly what, uh, you know, what they're going to do, what they're going to say. But, you know, if you honestly, if you watched Babylon five, the arcane are the Vorlons. Uh, they are these, mysterious we don't talk we don't we don't, we don't talk much uh, but when we do it's important and you know we're involved in everything but nobody knows it and when we get involved directly everybody knows it well what this um what this session it with what this this uh, game event was about is when the arcane get involved with lesser races they generally Feel, think of themselves as untouchable, you know, like who nobody's gonna mess with an arcane. <laughs> Come on, and the in a recent conflict, a Githyanki ship 
uh, an astral spear, uh, which is their uh, kind of big, long, scary ships, um, captured a an arcane and was doing this this you know as as Gith Yankee pirates are wont to do uh, this uh, ten thousand platinum piece bounty on the on the, the the head of this arcane, or we're gonna you know take him back eventually to our city in the astral plane or our city in limbo and you know force him to give him give up all his secrets which of course that you know he probably never would and and whatnot but the, you got to take it seriously these are crazy get yankee so uh a delegate a delegation was sent to go fetch the hostage negotiate new terms that delegation did not make it the delegation perished the adventurers in this game session is delegation number two. So a bunch of new people have been put together to go fetch this arcane from the Gith Yankee. And hopefully, bloodlessly, uh, all of these characters, in some fashion, are either directly or under the thumb of some kind of nobility or royalty. Uh, that is that was the one stipulation that the arcane had when arranging for this negotiation that only those of worthy blood could arrange for their fellow to come home so you get uh, you get Cedric Prane uh, Cedric Prane is a uh, noble fighter he is a um, a bodyguard of sorts. You know, he's always been kind of like the champion of his house. Uh, always lived up to, uh, you know, to, lived up to, to his his people's, uh, his family's needs, um, and is very much here to, you know, kind of protect. And in if things go bad, he's got a hell of a sword arm. Uh, we have uh, Dame Hollil Duskblade, a high elf, if I'm correct. Yes, a high elf paladin uh, who. Uh, is there for very similar reasons, uh, except she is also uh, a direct... She's technically like a princess. Uh, so not only is she a swordswoman and you know a, a fantastic fighter, but she's also legitimately like royal blood of her people. Uh, we have uh, Lady B. Brassgirdle, a dwarf. Uh, a dwarven warlock um, who uh, she has a book full of secrets and uh, her family the, the family that sent her told the arcane that the secrets that she has are uh, those are going to be key in what she, in, in the, the stuff to come so she has this giant rune book that only she can read and it's filled with secrets and lore uh, Jarl Vep Resent. Uh, he is a frost elf. Um, technically a variation of the Valinar. Uh, but he is a, uh, a barbarian tribal leader. He's the leader of you know, 2,000 elves from the place where he comes from. Um, and uh, a hell of a fighter, hell of a warrior. Um, that... Uh, his goal, his goal here, uh, or why the, why the arcane said that this kind of savage elf can show up, is uh, the planet that he comes from, the sphere that he that, that he comes from, is uh, currently looking for an arcane ambassador, and so this is his way of trying to earn, you know, one of those hey. Look how good! Look, look at we're good enough. You should, you know, let let me let me show you how good I am, and then you can hang out one of your guys in our sphere. Uh, and then we have uh, Duchess Fida Rathamast. Uh, she is uh, the daughter of nobility. Uh, she is a gif. She's one of the uh, 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 kind of ten foot tall hard-headed hippo people uh, that, that are uh, kind of unique to Spelljammer. Um, and uh, she is, she's a legitimate duchess, uh, but she is 
a an adventure like like an adventure monger she is filled with wanderlust she has been bugging her 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 parents and her brothers and i I need an adventure of my own i need i need to be able to to do this well her older brother was on the first detail to go bring back the arcane he died and seeing that this was as danger well i shouldn't say he died I should say that he didn't come back. Um, Seeing that this mission is as dangerous as it is, and she is kind of an annoying squeaky wheel within the family, they said, sure, here's an adventure for you. And then the last character is uh, Zenth Astokton, a Githzerai Zenth, which is uh, basically a noble monk. Um, And he is... Frankly, he is here to try and understand, uh, because the Gith, the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zerai have been fighting for eons, uh, he is here to basically m- make sure that the Gith Zerai do not get to keep the claim on this, on this arcane. And then the last session that I was going to run, so at the Gen Con session I ran a game where uh, it was the, uh, the one of the legendary voyages of the Wormstar 2. The Wormstar 2 is my kind of homebrewed ship where I run um, where I run standard adventures like you know kind of midway things and uh, it is crewed by uh, a bunch of crazies as of course um, they are, reclamation and salvage experts i.e. pirates raiders thieves um and it is crew it is captained by uh, a mr francisco sunset captain francisco sunset a uh, goblin who dresses up like a gnome to be socially acceptable uh at the gen con game there were a handful of characters that i uh, uh that one of the things that I, I love to do with the Wormstar is, depending on the game, uh, some of the crew has come, has come, some of the crew has gone. You don't really know exactly when in the time frame it could it could have taken place, you know, before or after some of these people have gone. So four of these characters were actually characters that were from the Gen Con game. Uh, Celeste, <laughs> Celeste Moth Song. Uh, she is a uh, kind of uh, cr- uh, out there dreamer. Her she she hears the voices of the spell jammers. Very hippie crazy girl. Um, Lenowin to sell uh, a high elf who actually is the one that is tied uh, currently, who is attuned to the spell the actual helm of the spell jamming ship, uh, the chair that you sit in that makes the the ship go. Uh, Master Hostenbeck Ragrun the Third, uh, a GIF Master at Arms, who uh, at the Gen Con game uh, was played by the uh, very very funny um, Rudy Rutenberg, uh, and uh, I, I would have I would have loved to be able to you know, try to see if Rudy was going to be at Gary Con and be like, hey, you need to come play this guy again. Uh, which actually brings us to uh, Theon Freister, uh, the ship's scout when, it, when they go a land. Uh, that was actually played originally by uh, Richard Ankney um, from uh, Rick Rolls America. Uh, and I was really hoping to be able to get him in the same role again uh, because he's he's big on my Spelljammer games. Uh, in fact, he's probably going to be playing in another one very shortly. We'll talk about that later. Um, but then there were two new characters that we added, or that I added. Uh, we have Pad Cord Thistle, the angriest halfling known to man. Um, literally, he is a uh, a halfling fighter criminal um, that the captain has taken on board because of some of the things that he knows. Uh, and then we have Grizzle Wetsnap. Uh, Grizzle Wetsnap, one of my favorite pieces of art. You look, he's wearing, he's wearing like a, like a, a, a leather 
like it's a like a skull like a leather skull face mask thing over his own so like the teeth of the little skull or where his mouth would part oh it's so cool looking um but grizzle here is a half orc barbarian um that uh effectively although no one has told him uh the captain kind of bought him sort of uh, from other people and while he has not re he's he's not being treated like a slave because that would be wrong um he is uh technically he belongs to the ship and be, as long as the captain keeps him fed and keeps him uh you know happily off dealing with uh, uh you know dealing with enemies the only, only way he knows how uh then ever that everybody's happy uh and and there has that hasn't had to come up in conversation uh in fact uh francisco hasn't even really told the crew that grizzle is technically property but not really because even francisco is has a, has a line that he can draw uh but that that particular session was another legendary voyage of the uh, uh, of the, the Wormstar 2, where uh, they had heard of a drifting galleon full of treasure out in the Phlogiston. Uh And he, it, it is a surefire, easy in, easy out. We're going to make tons of money on this run. It's been drifting out there for weeks. He has it on good authority that it's almost unpopulated by undead what undead which of course makes everyone a little nervous because you're going to a legitimate ghost ship and so what this session was was the worm star going out into the phlogiston which of course physics is very weird out in that crazy place uh and boarding a legitimate ghost ship uh, there there is more to it than that obviously uh because otherwise i wouldn't be giving you the plot right now uh, but those were the sessions that I had set up for GaryCon, and I'm hoping that uh, either I'll get a chance to, to run them again either next year um, or uh, possibly at another show along the way um, and then have new stuff for, for next year. Who knows? Uh, but what this does is that it, it basically shows you what um, what you could have been missing at uh, at gary con and hopefully next year you'll you'll go and try and sign up for some of these events because that's the kind of stuff that you'll you'll get to to play and get to be in um plus the dozens upon dozens upon dozens of other events that are out there hundreds of, of events that are out there um and just the ability to like get to hang out and have you know drinks and shots and uh f fabulous food and a great great atmosphere and just really have a weekend of playing games and enjoying yourself which is you know as everyone knows that is what i stand for as your professional nerd uh it's because if anything especially this weekend uh you know tonight i get to go and and rock and roll uh as a uh a hobgoblin mercenary in satine's game tonight um and i hopefully the rest of this weekend is also filled with some amazing fun games uh you know and the whole time i'm gonna be thinking about gary con and hopefully setting stuff up for my own games down the road some more digital stuff uh please 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 go check out the the links that i've got in the uh uh in the description uh and uh you know more than anything we'll we're all gonna weather this storm together stay in stay safe stay healthy and play some games we'll see you next week